Metformin is very popular in the anti-aging paradigm currently, so let's have a look at what it is, what it offers, and what the trade-offs are, because, well, it's always wise to have all the data. Metformin was discovered in 1922. However, it was not until the 1950s that there was any study done in humans, and it was first used as a medication in 1957. It is now widely used as a medication for diabetes and is available as a generic medication and by 2017 it was the fourth most commonly prescribed medication in the United States with more than 78 million prescriptions. It is even on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. So how does it work? You see metformin is a medicine used to prevent and treat type 2 diabetes and it does this by improving the way your body handles insulin which in turn leads to lower blood sugar levels. And because of this it impacts many diseases simultaneously through the power of AMPK activation, something we will look at later. It also seems to have various methods of action through NAD and as a sirtuin activator and assisting other defences against ageing as a whole, ostensibly slowing the loss of epigenetic information and keeping metabolism in check so all the organs stay younger and healthier. Indeed, it seems to allow CERT1 to operate efficiently, even with lower levels of NAD. Basically, metformin works by reducing the amount of sugar your liver releases into your blood, and it also makes your body respond better to insulin, which is just the hormone that controls the level of sugar in your blood. Now, this drug has been around for a long time, has been followed constantly, so we know a lot about its real-world health outcomes, and it seems that on a big picture, it shows a positive correlation with longevity, which has led to the debate that metformin could have additional uses and benefits outside of just treating diabetes. It is currently being studied with a view to helping in the fight against cancer, neurodegenerative conditions, vision problems like macular degeneration, and even ageing. If observational studies, cohort, case control, and cross-sectional studies are included, and the onset or prevalence of diseases of ageing, such as cancer, CVD, kidney failure, fractures, or cognitive impairment, are measured, the results suggest that diabetics taking metformin have a lower rate of all-cause mortality and of developing any cancer even compared to the general non-diabetic control population. A new research study conducted over six years in the Sydney Memory and Ageing Study looked at 1,037 Australians aged 70 to 90 years old. This has revealed an additional effect. Individuals with type 2 diabetes who use metformin experienced slower cognitive decline with lower dementia rates than those who did not use the medication. Although its efficacy, even in an at-risk cohort of aged people, has not yet been proven. Indeed, conflictingly, metformin is associated with a higher risk of vitamin B12 and vitamin B6 deficiency, which may result in an increased risk of cognitive dysfunction. Additionally, in those who exercised, metformin was seen to attenuate the increase in whole body insulin sensitivity and abrogate the exercise mediated increase in skeletal muscle mitochondrial respiration. But in reality, all this shows is a system that has switched from reproducing to repair, and this is where we want it to be, some of the time, obviously not all of the time. As I have said before, our bodies are intricate systems composed of many variables, and in order to revitalise fully, all areas need to be optimised in balance with each other, and metformin as a drug is just one piece to a much larger puzzle, where results could just be being held back by another limiting factor. So, will metformin continue to be a popular system hack, or will we, as we come to know the systems better, have something more targeted and safe? Well, it is hardly a dangerous drug, but again, you can struggle to get a legit source from a registered doctor. But the more it is talked about, and the more studies that there are that can shine more light on the mechanisms, the better. There are new drugs coming along all the time that target similar systems, and may work even better. We shall soon see. Anyway, whilst you are still here, why not check out this video? And if you've already seen that one, what about this one? And before you go, hit that subscribe button and click like just to support the channel. 
Thank you very much and as always, thank you for dropping by.